Let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you for who you are. Thank you that we have the privilege to come into this place. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do and have done and will do. God, I pray that as we open your word that you would speak to us, you would reveal yourself to us. Lord, shake us up. Lord, trim us down for the times where we think we know everything. Lord, forgive us for those times and and God, I pray today that you would reveal yourself to us in a new, fresh and vibrant way. So as we go from this place, we will know it's been good to meet with you. We will be uh, on fire because your spirit is guiding us and leading us. So be with us. May the words of my mouth be honoring unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, good morning to you. Uh, As I was um, thinking uh, this morning, uh, as I was praying this morning uh, in my office, uh, before I came down to service, I was thinking um, about how much I need to work out. I know that's kind of a weird thing to be thinking before service on a Sunday morning. Um, but I, I thought to myself, you know, I really need to get myself involved in a gym or something. You know, uh, some type of exercise would probably do me good, you know, a couple of days a week, two, maybe three days a week, just to kind of get myself involved in, in some type of exercise. And then I started to think about all of the, the effort that that would take. Firstly, it would take effort. Secondly, it would take effort. And thirdly, it would take effort. Um, and then, it, then, there was, then I thought, man, I've got to pay for something. I have to pay for something I don't even like to do. Like, what? who thinks that's a good idea? Um, and then just the time, like, when am I going to do it? And I came up with all sorts of excuses of why uh, it was just a bad idea. So just so you know, it's a bad idea, at least for me anyway. But I thought about this idea of, of going to the gym and those who are regular gym, gro- uh, gym goers, I thought, wow, it would be so nice to like be, be able to go and exercise and get muscles, which obviously I am the Adonis of men, obviously. Um, that's the part you laugh at, thanks. Uh, <laughs> but it's interesting, isn't it, how, how in our minds we think it's something's a good idea, but when it comes down to it, it, it might, maybe isn't such a great idea after all. Excuse me, I'm really hot. I don't know about you. I'm going to take my jacket off if that's okay. Um, I know I apologize. And we have DHQ offices in the, the, uh, the audience as well. So uh, um, I'll put it on the, no, I'll put it on the floor. Um, so I apologize. I'm just really hot. Um, yeah, you want to just, no. Um, I say I have, I have a one pack. I have a one pack. Um, <laughs> Not a six pack, Uh, I'm working on the other five. Uh, It's interesting though, as I was studying for this this third uh, sermon in this series of three, uh, going on Mark 12, 30, love the Lord your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And I hope you heard that from the singing company uh, from the very beginning, that that's what they were singing. I hope you got that. I hope that made sense to you. I hope you connected those dots. And um, as I was thinking about this third week of strength, I was reminded uh, of just what we've we've been through so far. First week, we looked at loving the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Loving God now and for eternity. Remember, we talked about saying that it is well with my soul. Remember that religious leader, he missed it, didn't he? He missed it right in front of him. Right in front of him, Jesus was. And he missed it. Yes, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And yes, love the Lord your God with all your mind. And yes, love the Lord your God with all your strength. But he missed it. He missed the fact that he needed to love the Lord your God with your soul, with everything that you are, with Jesus Christ being the answer. Then last week we looked at the mind, the mind and the knowing God, his word, his creation, knowing who he is, is key to loving him. And this week I thought about Uh, And I was praying about this idea and this word of strength. And what strength is? Ability, the force, your strength, your might. And I thought to myself, well, the natural thing to talk about is obviously what we would expect to talk about. Our service to other people. 
I mean, that's automatically what we think of when we think about loving the Lord our God with our strength. Everything that we are, our whole being. And I thought to myself, you know what? So often we, we go too quickly to serving others with our strength without forgetting where our strength comes from. We go too quickly to thinking about, man, I, I know I've got to love God and, and, and I've got to serve other people. And, and that's many of the reason why many of, many of you attend the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army is very much focused on reaching out to others. But I would chasten you in that as well. Is it the Salvation Army that is reaching out to others as the organization or is it us as the, the people of the Salvation Army reaching out to others? Because it's all very well having what we do uh, with our food pantry and our social services and our community center and reaching out all that way. That's what the Salvation Army does. But what I would challenge you this morning is this. What do you do? What do you do through the means of the Salvation Army? When was the last time you even went into our food pantry? Have you ever even been into our food pantry? Do you even know what's there? When was the last time you went into our community center? and sat through a basketball game and, and just chatted with the, the, the parents. And, and let's just be honest, friends, it's kind of embarrassing when there's more parents there than there are church people there. Like, it's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing. And you might be like, yeah, but I live so far away. Yeah, well, are you praying for that? Like, are you praying for those games and those connections of those folks that are there? What a privilege we have. What a privilege we have. To be able to preach the name of Jesus in that type of way. And so I thought to myself, why don't we begin there? As we look at loving the Lord our God with our strength, we must know where our strength comes from. I, um, I love gospel music. I'm a, I, I'm not, you're not going to get any gospel music this morning, sorry. I, I love gospel music. Um, and uh, every time I, I'm in the car, I try and find, uh, there's, there's one gospel music station. I don't even know what station it is, but I love, I love listening to the station because the, the message is so simple. And when I say simple, I don't mean elementary, I don't mean rudimentary, I mean simple, clear. The power of Jesus is what should drive us each and every day. So I wanted to look, I wanted us to look this morning in the book of Acts. We're going to spend our entire time in the book of Acts this morning. And we're going to try and get through about 16 chapters of Acts this morning. So I've got about 16 minutes, so about a minute, <laughs> about a minute a chapter. We're not going to go through the whole thing, don't worry about it. Acts chapter 2. When it comes to strength, we have to understand that the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, is what gives us the strength to do what we do. So I thought to myself, well, let's take a look. What better place to look than the book of Acts to see how they understood the name of Jesus Christ? what that represented, what it did, what, what difference it made in their lives. Acts chapter 2. We're going to begin at verse 36. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucify, crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to people and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall, we, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ forgives Sins. I mean, let's just think about this for a second. Forgives sins. Nobody else, nobody else in the Bible has said, hey, I'm the forgiver of sins. That's, who, that's what I do. But how? Through his humbleness. 
through his death and his resurrection. He's able to forgive sins, to give hope, a future, restoration. We, we preach about it, we talk about it all the time. But what I would challenge you is do you have the response that the people had in verse 37? They heard and were assured in verse 36 that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut where? The heart. They were cut to the very core of their being. They weren't just cut to like the, the outside part, the periphery. They were cut to the very central part of their being. And when we understand that the name of Jesus Christ forgives sins, what do we receive? There it is, isn't it? In that 38th verse. In the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus. We don't talk about that much, do we? I mean, we do, but we don't. I and mean, we talk about Jesus a lot. Do we truly talk about the power that is behind that name? The strength that comes behind that name? There are probably names, uh, when we were picking uh, names for the boys, there were certain names we just knew we couldn't use. You know, you don't want to use somebody else in the family because uh, it would just be a little bit odd and can't use this name and we don't really like that name and we want it to be this and we'd like it to be a biblical name and, which is nice because it kind of cuts some of those names down and then half the names in the Bible you probably wouldn't want to use anyway. Um, so it kind of cuts down to, but, but there's a there's specific uh, meaning behind a name and what a name represents because there's also other other names that we maybe even can bring to mind right now of people that we know. Even people within history. That we would be like, man, they are horrendous, horrible people. And I would never name a child after that person because of everything that goes along with that. The same the other way. You know, we know good people and fantastic people, and, and we want to name them after those people. A name has huge significance. And here, the name of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins. But notice before any of that happens, what, does Pete, what is Peter's reply? Repent and be baptized. Repent. Repent, not just seek forgiveness, Turn away from what you've been doing and then baptize. You might be like, well, in Salvation Army, we don't baptize. So how's he going to get around this one? I'm not going to get around it at all. What is baptism? Baptism is an outward expression of an inward experience. Just because we don't practice it in this location doesn't mean that it's not not applicable if you'd like to just as much as I stand up here and I confess in front of everybody when I put my Salvation Army uniform on and stood before the flags to say yes I'm a Christian it's my outward expression of my inward experience but it goes beyond that friends it goes beyond that it's how we live in the name of Jesus with the strength that comes from him Acts chapter 3. Man, that was like five minutes on one chapter. We're in trouble. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. That's right, a short one. Verse 16. Verse 16 of Acts chapter 3. By faith in the name of Jesus Christ, the man who you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him as you can all see. There is healing in the name of Jesus. You may be like, well, I've never seen anybody healed. Well, friends, there are people in this room who have been healed by the name of Jesus Christ. And we would kid ourselves if that Jesus Christ is different to the Jesus Christ we have today. The problem is, is our 
is our response to this, is our belief. Because you notice, by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. By faith, now what I'm not saying is this. Don't, don't, don't mishear what I'm saying here. I'm not saying, well if I, don't have, an, if I have enough faith, if I have enough faith, like if I have faith as big as a mountain, then God's gonna do exactly what I want him to do. I'm not saying that, and scripture doesn't say that. But what I'm saying is, if I have faith in Jesus Christ, that his will is perfect, that he is gonna do what is best for me and what is best for you, When was the last time, by faith, in the name of a Jesus, you prayed for somebody's healing? And here's the thing, friends. I, I know my mind goes straight to physical healing. My mind goes straight there, doesn't it? I mean, that's what we, when we talk about healing, that's where we go. But as I was, uh, as, as I have, just in my short three and a half years here, I remember, I remember kneeling uh, just a year ago, uh, Beside, uh, beside the bed of, a, of a, an elderly man who was part of this congregation. And my prayer was, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this man. And he's not with us anymore. He's not with us anymore. It's Bob Crampton. I was, I was kneeling by the side of his bed and holding his hand. But he is healed. He's healed because he's in heaven. Because that was Jesus saying, hey, I'm gonna heal you and you're not gonna suffer anymore because I, in the name of Jesus Christ, are gonna provide healing. And we've gotta understand that as human beings, we don't always understand it, we don't always get it, but we need to have wisdom. We need to seek the Lord's wisdom and that's when we go back to that Acts 2. What do we get in the, after the, in having faith in the name of Jesus Christ? We receive what? The Holy Spirit. And we need to seek guidance from, for wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 4, verse 10. We're actually going to go back to verse 8. Acts 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if you are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple, and I asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by, na by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, by whom God raised from the dead, and this man stands before you healed. Again, again we see Peter, who is what? Filled by the Holy Spirit. So he understands by the name of Jesus Christ. I love that he, I love that he throws in there, of Nazareth. Like, the worst place. That Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one that you kind of like threw away. And then he goes on, doesn't he? He is the stone you build as rejected, but has become the capstone. We go on to verse 18 of chapter four. Then they called him in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John replied, judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Here's the thing, the name of Jesus is also going to be challenging because there are times in our lives just as here where we are going to be told, shh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that anymore. I don't, want to hear, I, don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your God talk anymore. Like, that's not what I need right now. Well, friends, shame on us. Shame on us. If God is not the first thing on our lips and the first thing on our thoughts, Sometimes we have to speak up and tell the truth. He ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, yet still, still because he knew he had to, he did. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Uh, verse 11. Acts chapter 8, verse 11. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. This is Simon the sorcerer. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, they were baptized, both men 
and women. You might be like, well, what? You're just preaching the same things. No, look at this. A guy who did magic, a guy who did sorcery, a guy who was not living anywhere near the way he should be living. And people are amazed by this. I don't know about you, but there are plenty of things in the world that grabs, grab people's attention. And they feel like it's more important to do that than to go to church on a Sunday and worship with fellow believers. It's, it's more important to do other things or it's more exciting. Friends, the reason why they think it's more exciting is because we're not excited. If we started to get excited about Jesus and we started to live like that, like the Holy Spirit, no, not like the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit is in fi on fire inside of us, and people saw what a difference it made and heard what a difference it made rather than, oh man, it's cold again today, isn't it? Oh man, I can't believe it's cold. Oh, it's winter. What a surprise. I mean, it's amazing to me how many times that conversation happens and not, hey, let me tell you what happened yesterday. We're an amazing worship service. And, and, and this is what I learned. Like, who cares if they don't want to even listen? They'll tell you pretty quick. But if you're excited about it, Rather than like, I spent 20 minutes yesterday, I spent an hour on the phone yesterday with a friend of mine in England. We spent 20 minutes talking about the top six teams in the Premier League in soccer. We spent the first like 20 minutes talking about it. And afterwards, as I was, as I was, uh, as I was <laughs> praying last night, I was like, man, like, why is, that the first, why is that the longest amount of time on this hour phone call that we talked about? We spent 20 minutes talking about that. And I spent like five minutes talking about like how his spiritual life was and how the call was going. I was like, shame on me. Shame on us. When we're more excited about things of the world, of the power that's in the name of Jesus. Acts 16. Acts 16, verse 18. We're actually going to go uh, back to 16. Acts uh, 16, 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. Hang on a minute, like, like what's that story all about? Like, that sounds like a good, why would, why would Paul, like, cast that out? Like, that makes sense, you know? Like, why, why would he cast that out? Like, that's a good thing. Like, you're, you're, you're sharing. You're sharing. A slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. You see, for this girl... She knew. She knew who these men were by the way they lived their lives. Yet still, there was something that Jesus had to deal with. That Jesus had to make a difference and transform her life. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. You see, for, for Paul here, he was trying to understand what it meant to have the power of Jesus make a difference. We see so often in our world today, where the name of Jesus is just kind of thrown away. 
Or it's used as a swear word. One last scripture for, the, for this morning. In Philippians. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What does it mean to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and your strength? This is it. That because in verse nine God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that that name, the powerful name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Notice that. Notice that it's not just speaking to us either. Speaking to those in the heavenly angelic realm and those that are under the earth. Those that don't believe that one day when Jesus comes back, we will have the privilege to be a part of that group that sees every need to bow and every tongue confess. I mean, just think about that for a second. I mean, think about that for a second. When Jesus comes back, we're all like, ha ha, we told you so, no. When Jesus comes back in all of his glorious splendor and we are called to be with him, that is when our hearts should break for two reasons, I believe. One, man, some people just didn't get it. Our second reason, I know the reason why for me, I just didn't try hard enough. And I'm reminded of that each and every day. I didn't try hard enough. Why didn't I try harder with my cousin? Why didn't I try harder with my brother? Why didn't I try harder with my next door neighbor? Why didn't I try harder with my best friend? To show them what it meant to believe. To show them what it meant to have a transformed life with Jesus now and for eternity. Why didn't I rely upon the strength of Jesus Christ to continue to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength? So my challenge to you this morning is this. How are you loving your God? Are you relying on the power of Jesus Christ? Or are you just kind of going through the motions? Are you just doing what you do because that's just kind of it? That's what I'm supposed to do? And is your mind somewhere else? And your heart somewhere else? Because when we understand what Jesus Christ did for us, the power of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, that he came, that he died, that he defeated death. I mean, that's a pretty amazing thing. That he rose again that he can give us forgiveness and hope and a future and transform lives. 
And the problem is, friends, if, if, if some of us are honest, we don't really want transformed lives. If some of us are truly honest, we really don't want transformed lives. Some of us feel like we've already done it. Like we've done our thing and, 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 and we've done the whole transformation thing and now I'm in good shape and everything's like where it's supposed to be in, in, in these boxes, A, B, C and D. But friends, the reason why we're still here is because God's still got some transforming to do. Not just in your own life, but in the lives of others. And then there's some of you here this morning who maybe have never even experienced the transforming power of Jesus. And some of you, you're like, man, I'd, I'd love to know what that guy's prancing around up there for 20 minutes talking about. I got, well, what is that? Well, friends, I can keep prancing as long as you want me to, but it's not going to make any difference unless you experience it. If you experience the power of Jesus Christ, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because you will go, wow, that's what God's trying to be in trying to reveal himself to me. That's what he's trying to show me. There are many things in our lives, I get it. There are many things that, that pull at our time and our finances and our resources and, and our talents and, and all of those things. But I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Can you say that your first your best is for the power of Jesus Christ. Is being used by the power of Jesus Christ or are you just giving him his your leftovers? Your bits at the end. It's kind of like a battery. We go through so many batteries in our house, I feel like I want to take out stocks in batteries. My kids' toys have 18,000 batteries in each one and they never turn stuff off. But for some of us in our lives, all we do is keep putting dead batteries into our lives and expecting us to go. We keep doing it, or, or they're not totally dead, but we want to get the last little bits out of it. When Jesus said, I've got a, a torrent that I want to like, overwhelm you with, just allow me to. You heard the songs that sing, I know a fount where sins are washed away. It's not like a tiny little sprinkle. Like it's a fount. It's huge. And it's yours. Like that's the best part. Out of all of this, out of saying loving the Lord our God with our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength, everything else has been done. That's why we can love God. That's how we can be transformed people we have a song that we sing and it's a, a very simple a chorus and the, the words will, will be on the, the screen and it's, 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 it's an opportunity for us this morning to take some time to say in my own life am I giving God what he's due Am I saying, yes, Lord, I love you with everything that I have, my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. And I'm relying on the strength of Jesus Christ. I am tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit to make a difference. That's why the line, on thine altar, here I lay, all there is of me, makes huge, significant impact. And this is the reason why. Because so often, we don't layer there everything there is on the altar. Because what happens on the altar? It's refined. Jesus comes down and refines. And for some of us, we get so caught up in our own way of thinking, and our own way of feeling, and our own way of being motivated, that we forget to love the Lord our God. We start to love ourselves and our own soapboxes. We start to love those more than we love the Lord our God. So we're going to sing this a couple of times through. If you want to come to this altar, 
Maybe you need to come and you need to lay whatever it is on the altar. Yourself on the altar. Time, talents, treasures, whatever it is. Maybe it's yourself. You just need to come. You need to kneel before the Heavenly Father and say, God, yeah, all there is of me. Day by day, I want to bring them to thee. On thine altar I lay all there is of me. Let's sing this together a couple of times and come as we sing this one. All there is. I really feel like the Holy Spirit this morning is it's just like challenging me and I hope challenging you not to just say the things I'm supposed to say or do the things I'm supposed to do and then when I'm out of the, the earshot of those that might keep me accountable or I'm out of the eyesight of those that might keep me accountable kind of do whatever I want and friends I want to challenge us this morning how are you honoring God or maybe I should say are you honoring God and that's not that's not supposed to be out of a place of judgment It's just out of a place of challenge. In your life, in my life, when I look at the scriptures, I see again and again and again where God says, stop trying to do it on your own. Let the power of the Holy Spirit let the power of the name of Jesus in and let him show you something that is just going to blow your mind and when frustration comes and when uncertainty comes that I believe is how we honor God because we say God all there is of me is for you it's not about what I do it's not about what I've done it's about what I'm going to do and so this morning as we go from this place as we pray together I want you to go from this place with a sense of purpose a sense of urgency with the power of Jesus, but also with that personal like introspection to say what in my life is not honoring to the Lord? And what am I not giving to Him that will bring Him honor and glory? And what do I need the power of Jesus to do in my life so I can be transformed and see others around me? transformed in the power and name of Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we see even just in those few moments in, in Acts. And that's only just a few of the many examples of how your name, the power of your name, Jesus, transforms from healings to uh, dispelling uh, evil spirits and that God was all done when you were in heaven. 
and those done by your disciples, those that you teach, like us, your disciples. So God, I pray that this day we will go in the power of Jesus, that we will give you all the praise and the honor and glory that is due unto your name. That God, that you would just, um, yeah, you'd make a huge transforming difference in each of our lives. And God, when uncertainty comes and when difficulty comes and when those things that the devil will throw at us come, I pray, God, I pray that you would give us your peace. You would give us the courage to stand up for you. Now I pray that as we uh, close in our vocal benediction together of, of, of giving our praise unto you. And God, we would honor you with our voices, with our words, with everything that we are, as your church. Be with us and bless us. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen and amen. We invite our band.